I might have just outed myself as the biggest noob in the Pokemon community. My most recent Pokemon video has, at the time of this recording, over 13,000 views. That is my most watched video to date. And although I love the warm welcomes to the community and the friendly advice I've been receiving, what kind of addition to the community would I be if I didn't make some sort of part two to that video? So hey guys, it's Poet, and today I'm going to learn even more about Pokemon VGC. Okay, I have a lot to cover. All the comments I've received on the video were super uplifting, supporting, and most importantly, knowledgeable. Seriously, if any of you guys return for part two, thank you all so much for what you said in the comments. It really helped me, and I had a lot of fun researching all the stuff that you suggested. A lot of people really highlighted what I nailed doing and what I failed to do. This was all part of the process though, and I was totally here for it. Starting with what I read a lot of was that, well, Team building isn't always a necessity. Of course I wanted to try it, I wanted to be like my favorite competitive Poketubers, but optimism aside and realism in mind, I just am not at that mental level. No noob is. I don't know why I ever expected to be that good. The next thing that I read a decent amount of was to learn more from Picolytics and through experience battling with a team that I had put together. I never heard about Picolytics until I posted this video, so... I decided to give it a shot as any new player should and I found it to be way easier than what I was doing to begin with. Shocker, right? It's almost like listening to actual players in the community kind of has its benefits. Who would have thought? And something that I, I really listened to while trying to learn more about this game was that loss is inevitable. Everybody was telling me that the only way that you can truly win at Pokemon BGC is if you lose at Pokemon BGC. Because then you learn, you gain experience, and you know what you can do to counter certain things going forward. Also, it's just kind of like a, a really nice thing to take away from it. I read a lot of comments like these, and it really gave me a lot of hope to keep going. So, thanks guys. Now having better tools to kind of assemble my own team, I decided to rewatch some of the Pokemon World's highlights for some teams that I could potentially borrow indefinitely or kind of take some inspiration from. So what better team than the 2023 World Champions team? Because uh, yeah, if he won, so can I, right? For real, the real reason I chose this team was because I already had prior experience with some of the Pokemon on the team and the others were sort of meta, meta enough that I could probably learn them if I just watched a couple people play with them or hell, maybe if even I played with them. So that's what I did. I decided to watch some videos on them and I even did a lot more reading. I'm so tired of reading, please make it stop. After a whole lot of suffering and one minor change of team members, I decided that it was time to hop right back into Showdown and try my luck yet again. It's time for the old best of three matches. First matchup, I could immediately tell I remembered some of what I learned previously. I found myself strategizing a lot more, and even while I was backed into a corner, I was making some decent calls. Ultimately, I got wiped. Not a big deal, it was my first game back in a hot minute, and I made some decent plays. I was okay with the loss. My second game, I got brutally thrashed. The game lasted a total of seven turns. Not gonna lie, I totally was not paying attention during this game. I made god-awful calls and truthfully, I struggled dealing with the Frigorath and Iron Hands combo. It was just way too much for me. They mocked me because they're better, I'll admit it. My third game, the game I thought I could pull another miracle out of, didn't treat me much better. I started off on the wrong foot but made a decent recovery towards the mid-game. I had it at a 2v3 situation at one point in my favor, and uh, I whiffed. I whiffed it. It all came down to me not using Protect on Fluttermane, and it was a play that I saw and instead chose to be greedy, uh, be offensive, and I should have just played the long game, and I probably would have won that game in that case. All three games over and done with in the span of 25 minutes. All losses.
Well, this is depressing, isn't it? What happened to the Mr... Oh, man, I'm so excited to play VGC and I'm going to go and try Regionals Poet from a couple months ago. Well, newsflash. He's still here. Did you think I'd end the video by giving up? What kind of goofy-ass person do you take me for? Fourth game, it's go time, baby. This was one of the strangest teams I've ever seen, but I don't know a damn thing about metas or team comps beyond more diversity equals good, so who am I to judge? I decided to use some Peakalytic facts I learned and use Fluttermane with Arcanine to lead. The Intimidate drop Arcanine could provide felt essential at this point, after using it incorrectly or just not using it at all before. Fluttermane is just too good to not use, and it's actually starting to drive me crazy that I didn't buy Scarlet, and therefore don't have easy access to these things. It's such a freaking trooper! This thing is crazy! The opposing team brought out Breloom and Screamtail. I decided to let Fluttermane protect while I extreme speed the Screamtail. I know this thing can potentially be a beast, and I wanted to get rid of it as soon as I could. The Breloom ends up protecting, which means I made the right call with Fluttermane, and Screamtail eats the extreme speed from Arcanine. What I wasn't expecting was it to use Howl, raising both Breloom and Screamtail's attack back to its neutral form. This is getting scary, but I knew I had to play the long game. Screamtail uses Helping Hand on Breloom, and the Breloom hits Arcanine with a boosted Mach Punch in the next turn. Thankfully, Arcanine's a unit of a dog and doesn't even dip into yellow health bar range. I have Fluttermane use Icy Wind and end up getting the speed drop on both of them. I also get a small and sneaky Will-O-Wisp on the Screamtail for some added chip damage. I almost decided to double up into Breloom, but keeping him in meant another more potentially dangerous Pokemon couldn't get in. So I think I made a pretty sm- And it's gone. They withdrew it. Out comes Hisui and Arcanine. No big deal, right? Huh, yeah, yet again I'm faced with a Pokemon that pretty much can destroy my entire team. Time to get creative, yet again. Right off the rip, we're hit with the Intimidate drop, which definitely doesn't do us any favors. I protect Fluttermane and send in Iron Hands in exchange for Arcanine, which ends up saving his life as the opposing Arcanine used Rock Slide. Screamtail tries to disable a move on Fluttermane, but Protect saves the day yet again. I feel the momentum swinging back in my favor with this play, but I knew it was Screamtail's time to get out of this freaking game. The opponent withdraws Arcanine and sends Breloom back out. I'm assuming to counter Iron Hands, but I'm not sure. Either way, my peanut-sized brain perfectly predicted this. I had Iron Hands fake out Screamtail, essentially wasting its turn to set up any more Howls, and then I had Fluttermane use Dazzling Gleam, which brought Screamtail down into one-shot range. Breloom obviously died in this turn, and Galarian Zapdos. This was almost immediately followed by it terastalizing into ground type. No big deal, we got counters to this, and I wasn't worried. Screamtail yet again helping hands its friend, giving it the extra damage it needs to really start becoming a problem. I have Fluttermane use, you guessed it, Icy Wind, cutting their speed further. This also got a huge chunk out of Zapdos' health bar and somehow finally helped me get rid of the godforsaken Screamtail. I know I said earlier that I was going to get rid of this thing, but I ended up getting so distracted with the other Pokemon that it became kind of like a side quest. Unfortunately, all of this good news comes at a cost. Galarian Zapdos stomps the absolute shit out of my Iron Hands and it just can't hold it together any longer. I bring out my Amoongus to help support my Fluttermane now, seeing as it's the only supporting Pokemon I have left for Fluttermane. I know this move is risky, but if I play my cards right, Amoongus will win this battle for me. I repeat Fluttermane's last move, dropping the opponent's speed even further. This is starting to get huge, and I'm just now realizing it. Unfortunately, Galarian Zapdos' defiant ability flips its switch. Fluttermane doesn't stand a chance and is absolutely flattened under the cinder block heel of Zapdos. First Iron Hands and now Fluttermane? This thing's a bigger menace than the Screamtail. Not only that, but the enemy Arcanine hits Amoongus with a Flare Blitz, almost completely wiping him out, and the Spore I try to lull it to sleep with is bounced by its safety goggles. This play essentially trashed all of what Iron Hands died for, and I was really starting to stress out. Nevertheless, Arcanine subbed in for Fluttermane. Zapdos' Defiant 
has now put it at a 3.5 times attack, further pinning my back against the wall. I cannot even imagine what this team would have done to mine had they started with the Screamtail and Zapdos lead. I only see one win condition here. Zapdos seems just low and slow enough that I can land an extreme speed from Arcanine. It's a gamble, but the win hinges on getting rid of the Zapdos, so I give it a shot. Sure enough, it kills. Amoongus protects itself and saves itself from utter obliteration at the hands of Arcanine's extreme speed. I'm not out of the woods yet though. The next turn my Arcanine uses extreme speed on it, barely chipping its health down. It retaliates with Rock Slide, absolutely crushing Arcanine and Amoongus down to their last little slivers of health. I do not know how these two survived here, but I am super thankful for it. Thankfully, I kind of foresaw this coming and I had my Amoongus use Pollen Puff on my Arcanine, bringing him back up into the green and ready to give the opposing Arcanine one last extreme speed hit. Just like that, I've done it yet again. This was by no means an easy win. I really don't think any of them are, but this win was very, very satisfying. The potential setup that could have been had on me was scary, and the fact that I was able to somehow dismantle it completely baffles me even now. I really wish I would have been able to win one of my first three games, but I played really sloppy and I paid the price for it. You can't win them all, but you can learn from them. Overall, I think I've yet again proven how totally great I am at Pokemon and that I can actually work my brain hard enough to pull out the dub. I believe my win-loss ratio now is 2 wins and 5 losses, so I'm well on my way to absolutely embarrassing the likes of Wolf Glick and Cybertron VGC. Wait, Regulation E? Aw oh man, what the fuck? In all seriousness, I have so much more to learn and I believe that I will continue to learn as I play. Like I said in the last video, the fact that I have the opportunity to continue to learn new things about a game series I've played for so long excites me, like, a lot. Also, reading the comments and, you know, receiving advice along the way has been an absolute blast and almost a privilege. I wouldn't have this any other way. If you guys enjoyed the video and want to support the channel, subscribe. It's free, and so is liking the video. Let me know if you've got any more advice down in the comments or if you just want to talk. I love talking to you guys, I'll try to respond to every single one of you. Either way, my name's Poet, and I'll see you guys in the next one.